Hi, I'm Sharon, and this is episode 24 of the Sampler Style Podcast. Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 24. Thank you so much for joining me today. I do have quite a bit of stitching to show you, so we're going to get started shortly. But before we do, it would be awesome if you could give this video a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed already, please do. And yeah, so I actually have a giveaway from episode 22. So, so I did a random comment picker from episode 22. I forgot to do it on episode 23 <laughs> because yeah, I need to get back to a more steady recording schedule. You know why I haven't been. <laughs> if you watched last, the last episode, I explained everything why. If you haven't seen that, go back. And in the beginning, I explained why. Anyway, so um, I'm going to do the giveaway right now. I was going to wait to the end, but I'm going to give it away right now. So I am giving away a pristine copy of Mary Ann Cop, 1839 by Brenda Gervais. I am stitching this right now and it's gorgeous. Wait till you see, it's beautiful. But long story short, um, from Colorado Cross Stitcher, my copy arrived damaged. She was so nice. Um, she sent me a new copy. So I have two. My damaged copy wasn't bad, but I'm keeping that one and I'm giving away this one because someone else should really enjoy this rather than it sitting in my stash. <laughs> Plus, I don't stitch from paper patterns. I stitch with Markup RXP, which I absolutely adore. It is, if you are any type of computer iPad savvy, it's an awesome application. I'll talk more about that later. But anyway, I did a random picker, YouTube picker, and the winner is Lynn Quilt, L-Y-N-N-Q-U-I-L-T. Congratulations, Lynn. Fun fact, my middle name is Lynn. <laughs> Love that name. And Lynn Quilt is also a mar Markup RXP user. And um, that's amazing, Lynn. It, it's, it's a game changer, honestly. I only use that. If I couldn't use that, I wouldn't stitch it. Luckily, you can scan your patterns into it. And you have to do a little bit of work. There's a little bit of prep work involved which is perfectly fine. I, I like to tinker with software. So um, there's only one chart that I haven't been able to get to work. And what I might do is I might contact the developer. He has a Facebook group and he might be able to help me. Um, I've watched some the tutorials on how to fix my issue. Nothing's working. So, and it's not a PDF that I scanned. It's a PDF that I downloaded. So I'm not sure really why it, the format of it is, is odd. I don't know. So maybe I could try reform. I think I might have tried reformatting it and it still didn't work. <laughs> that's okay. Anyway, that's getting off topic. So I'm not ready to start that project anyway. I'll talk more about it when I do. So Lynn Quilt, you can, um, I assume your name is Lynn. You can email me. Um, I'm trying to think of the email for this account. Sorry. Let's see. It is sampler style floss tube at gmail.com. I will put a link down below and I will scroll it across the screen. Sampler style floss tube at gmail.com. Okay, so let's get started with the stitching because oh my goodness, I have a ton to show you. 
First up, I have a brand new start. And, okay, so before I show you all my things that I'm stitching, I just wanted to say that everything I'm working on right now, I'm completely in love with. I really don't have any desire to add to my chart collection right now because nothing, nothing has caught my eye. Um, well, one thing, it's an older chart, I'll show you later. But um, nothing has really caught my eye to start um, or to buy, even from market. Beautiful things. I can appreciate all of it. Love watching all the videos um, of the market releases. I just love everything I have right now, and I'm going to stick with that for a while. But I did have a new start, and everything I'm working on right now currently is huge. <laughs> completely huge and that's that's okay it doesn't bother me I kind of am going into a little rotation thing <laughs> we'll see um, and I'm going to talk about it right now so my new start is a peacock a unicorn and a badger This chart is so fun. And last year when I purchased the chart, I loaded her into Markup RXP and did all my setup, which takes time. I just, you know, I just had a rainy day and I just felt like messing around on my iPad. And I set everything up. Um, I just hadn't organized the flosses yet. So I decided to do that before I, before I started it. And this is actually my leap year start. A lot of people are doing leap year starts with the idea that you will work on these projects for four years and complete them before that time. So I did some math. So now in Markup RxP, it will tell you, if, if, if it can recognize all the stitches, it will tell you how many stitches you have in the project. And I think this is 110,000 because it's full coverage. So in order for me to finish by four years, I'd have to do somewhere between two and three thousand stitches a month, which boils down to seven days a month. Okay, so that's my little mathy math thing. Um, I would like to finish it before four years. I was thinking today, I'm like, oh, four years. That's 2028. That sounds like it's light years away to me. <laughs> so I would like to finish it before then. So I will probably at some point step it up. Maybe we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what mood strikes me. I don't know. <laughs> we'll figure it out. So the, the most fun of this, though, is my daughter stitching it with me. How fun is that? So she got all of her supplies from 123Stitch. And I had given her a piece of um, 20, no, I gave her a piece of 32 count Lugana in like a gray color. Um, it's not hand dyed. I, I had gotten it from 123 Stitch, but I don't stitch on 32. She loves to stitch on 32. So she's using two strands on this Lugana. I cannot wait to see hers. She is super fast fast. She works from home and she's a developer, so she spends a lot of time waiting around for her computer programs to load and to, to compile. Is that the word? And so she does a lot of stitching. She's so fast. So I'm going to visit her in two weeks. I can't wait to see hers. But here's mine. 
I've been talking a lot. I didn't take it out of the hoop because I'm actively working on this right now. So I just left her in. I am stitching this on Zweigart Platinum, which is the called for linen, 40 count. And I'm using all the called for Overa Swa silk. So the other day I just sat down and I organized my silks. So I'm gonna show you how I do that right now. So what I do, I take those DMC bobbins and I wind my silk around the bobbin and then I, um, I just cut lengths of 18 inches when I wanna stitch. So I have, um, and it's a, it's a really great use of your floss because you just don't waste any. You, know, you cut your 18 inches and then you pull from that, stitch with it, and then it can go right back in your bag. Here, here's a... So, I love this method. I had them organized um, kind of by number and bags, and then I was like, nah, I'm just gonna put them on the rings. This is much easier for me to find colors because there's so many. And I, I know you can't really see them. But I kind of organized them on the rings. I have two rings. I organized them by color. So I did the golds, the reds, and the greens on this one, or some of the greens, some of the yellow greens, and then the blues and the browns I put on this ring, which I know you can't really see. It's hard. Not as pretty as the floss drops, but I would not put Overa Swa Silk on floss drops because this is the first time I've ever used Overa, Overa Swa Silk. And it's a very delicate, low twist silk. Um, it is a spun silk. So it's made with um, not the continuous um, line of continuous thread that comes off the cocoon. It's made more from like um, the waist fibers, I think, or the different kind, the fibers that are shorter. So it's definitely more delicate. And if these were on floss drops, by the end of this project, they would be so ratty. So. They're very expensive. I have them protected. <laughs> um, do I like these? I am learning to like them. They're completely different from NPI. Um, every website tells you that NPI is a reeled silk that comes from the continuous strand that comes off the cocoon. Um, and I, it's, they're much more integral, integral, and they don't, they're not as, they don't fray as easily and they're a little bit of a tighter twist and a little smoother. Um, different experience. NPI, I love, absolutely love. I get better coverage with these. Um, I prob, I don't stitch all the way to the end of the strand because they fray, you know, they'll, little bits of pieces come off as you go through. So I just want to keep it as nice as possible. So I end my thread a little sooner than I would with NPI. But um, they're beautiful colors. And look at the beautiful coverage. It's, it's gorgeous. 
So I'm about to start the peacock. So right now I'm going to, so I'm stitching on this seven days a month, seven days or more, depending on my mood. So this, this part, everything except the flower I did in, in um, March. So I started this February 28th, 29th. I started on the 29th leap year. <laughs> and then um, this month I, I did the flower and the stem and now I'm starting on the peacock. And so what I'm probably going to do is, if you can see this peak, here's the peacock right here. So I'm probably going to do her in sections. I'm going to do like the head, finish all of that, and then just do this part and this part. And once I finish the peacock, and maybe there's another flower stem that comes off of here, I'll do fill-in of the background, the green. I love doing fill-in. <laughs> especially with one color. So I don't think I would like a full coverage where there's a lot of confetti. There's some confetti here, but it's, I don't think it's that bad. If it's just like like two stitches here and then you have to go all the way over that, that would drive me insane. So I don't see myself doing that. But this is a great full coverage piece. If you like stitching samplers and you like block stitching, this is a fun one. The next piece I'm stitching is really my focus piece and probably Peacock will become my focus piece after I finish this. This one is also huge. It has 77,000 stitches, but it is all one color. So this is AKGIT by Modern Folk Embroidery. And I think I've started this at the end of December. And what is it? It's April now. I, I'm doing a pretty good job. It's going to take me another year. To, <laughs> it's fine. But this is, this is what I really am stitching most days. So... I'm giving this like two to three weeks of work, depending on my mood and, you know, like stitch what you love, whatever you're, whatever's calling to you. So I finished, since I saw you last, I finished this guy. Okay, so look at the detail on this. It's incredible. I'm just going to hold it here for a while and let you gaze. Because it's just gorgeous. And I think I also did this bottom one. Where are these two bottom ones? So I'm doing this vertically. I'm doing border and then up and um, from top to bottom because all of these in a row are similar to each other. I will have put a picture of it because you can, so you can see in each row, they're just they're just very similar. So I don't want to get bored by just stitching the same similar motifs all the way across. So going up and down makes more sense to keep interest. So all right, I'm gonna sh give you close-ups of this because it's just stunning. Never let it be said that I don't show you my stuff. <laughs> the visuals are very important to me. 
in these videos. I want you all to see, hopefully it's focusing. I know the window's kind of shining through, but. Okay, and I'm also adding all of the little details to it as I go. Because I don't want to forget anything. So if there's letters next to a motif, I'm sticking them in. If there's little guys next to it, I'm sticking them in. I love this. I'll start it again next week. Because she's pretty. <laughs> really pretty. And I want her on my wall. I know exactly where she's going to go. So if I, maybe I'll, I'll pop in a picture. So I stitch, I have a little office set up in my dining room <laughs> and it works fine. It's very nice and cozy and I keep it very neat because I like my desk to be clean. <laughs> and um, behind me, there's a really cute, like French chicken print and it's adorable but it's the exact same size as this and this is gonna that chicken out of here after I'm done and having it framed and this is going in its place so I'm excited about it last time I showed you AKGIT I kept calling it AGIT <laughs> no it's AKGIT by Modern Folk Embroidery. I am stitching it on, oh, I didn't even tell you. Okay, I got so caught up in the motifs. This is a piece of, I thought it was Brenda's Brew, it's r and &R. no, it's Mayflower Mocha. And I told the story last time, last summer, I was gonna start another project on it, and I spilled water in my stitching bag because I was outside and I was carrying it out in a bag and somehow I spilled water or tea. It stained the whole thing right down the middle. Big blotches of dye. So I washed it. I washed it with some Dawn dishwashing liquid and the stains came out. So the color might be a little bit lighter because I'm sure the stains came out. So it, it did bleed like the water was, you know, you could see the dye coming out into the water, but it fixed it. It's perfect. I, I'm so happy because it's a half a yard and it is so perfect for this project. Oh my goodness. It looks exactly like the model, which I love. Okay. Project number three, Marianne Kopp, 1839. I'm trying to think, I think this, this isn't as big. I think this has 30,000. I'll look it up and put it down here. <laughs> Markup RXP will tell you. <laughs> so, and I like it too. It'll tell you how many stitches you stitched every day and it tells you how long you stitch per day, which is really cool. All right, here she is. This is beautiful. So I'm going to hold it back here. The fabric is LFA Linens Schooner. And um, Sue from LFA Linens is dying again which is super exciting. And um, I, we were texting the other day and we're gonna have, we're gonna meet up. Um, if you're a knitter and you're interested in a spring fiber festival, there's a fiber festival in Salem, Massachusetts, um, the weekend of April 20th. It's called the Witch Wool Festival. I don't think it's very big. Um, but we're going to meet up there. My daughter's going to come and um, I'm going to see her project, her 
well, I'm going to stay with my daughter. So I'm going to see her Peacock Unicorn and Badger project, which I'm really excited about. But anyway, this is Schooner, 40 count, by Sue of LFA Linens. She's dying again. You'll be able to get her um, fabric from Rachel at Treehouse Fiber Arts. And Schooner is just a beautiful light, light gold. And so many things look good on it, like um, holiday stitching, fall stitching. Looks great on Schooner. It's one of my favorites, actually. Um, and look how beautiful this project looks. The colors are just beautiful. That little white bit of yellow it actually looks a lot like the model which is what i was going for see love it um so last time i had a floss tube i had done this flower basket the top of the flower basket the flowers i finished the basket part and I started that house because I was dying to knit that knit. <laughs> I'm a knitter. I was dying to stitch that house. And look how cool it is. Oh my goodness. So this is on 40 count and I'm using all the called for. Cause I love every color. Wouldn't change a thing for this linen. The house is meant to be, I, it looks like bricks to me. It's this like orange-ish tangerine color. It looks so good. I, I cannot wait to keep stitching. Actually what happened was I finished that big motif on AKGIT, that first one I showed you, and I was like, mm, I need to, I need some color in my life. So I picked this up, and that's when I did the basket and I and started the house. And I'm just gonna stitch that house. I'm gonna finish it. That's my next thing. So probably toward the end of the month, I'll pick her up again. This border, it's beautiful. I hate stitching borders. <laughs> They're so repetitive. I get so bored. So I did the border, the bones of the border all the way around last summer. <laughs> I was really sick when I did it too. I'm amazed that it came out. Um, but I'm going to do all the fun stuff and then I'm going to just like force myself to finish this border. <laughs> So that is Marianne Cop. Love her. She's a beauty. Forty count schooner on with all the called for. One last thing that I'm, every once in a while, I'll pick this up. It's in the hoop. This is also modern folk embroidery. And this is the um, 2024 stitch along. And I started this last fall before I started the other three. And I love it. I'm stitching it with NPI. Um, I'll tell you what colors right now because I have them right now. I'm using, and it looks a lot like the model. So the red chi is Chinese Red Range color 504. And the blue is French Blue Range, color 749. Really beautiful colors. The 
the fabric is 40 count. I think it's a uh, picture of this plus fog. It's either fog or bramble, but I'm pretty sure it's fog. It's a light, barely there color. So, and I have a nice little start on it. It's really pretty. And looking at it, I kind of want to work on it. <laughs> it's fun. So I like it because the motifs show up. I forget the name of this kind of stitching. There's a name for it where you stitch the background and the and then the motifs pop out instead of the motifs being the stitching. It's the background that's the that's the flower, if that makes sense. There is a word for that. I'll try to look it up and put it underneath, or not. <laughs> so anyway, again, that is um, the 2024 Stitch Along by Modern Folk Embroidery. I think it's, it's got a time theme. There's a big clock in it. It's really, really cool. So, yeah, it's just a fun one. And that's basically all I'm actively working on right now. That's a lot. This one is, my, is the smallest one. This one is like 35,000 stitches. I think there's like 17,000 in each color. Kind of fun to know that. It helps to know how much floss you need. So speaking of NPI, I'm also using NPI for my AKGIT and um, it's sitting right here and I'll show you. So I'm, I'm using hanks of NPI. The big hanks. And I'll tell you what color I am using. Color 588 in the Burnt Umber range. It's a very, very dark, dark, dark brown, almost black. And I, in order to manage these, I wound it on my Swift into a cake, a yarn Swift. Um, and then I wound it then into a ball because the cake was falling apart because it's so soft because it's silk. So this is what I have left of the first hank. I think I'm going to need to order another one. So I have, I have to do some math. I'm pretty sure I'm going to need one more hank. And I'm going to order that very soon. And hopefully they still have the dye lot. I don't think it's, it would matter that much, but their dye lots can vary, especially the reds. So you have to watch out, but yep. I love it. So that is all I have been working on. I did buy something. Um, I considered this one for my um, leap year start, but I decided since I already had everything pretty much ready to go with Peacock Unicorn, and I was going to start that this year anyway, I made that my leap year start. So this next one is another huge project. <laughs> and I'm going to show it to you right now. I will absolutely not get to this this year. However, I am pretty excited about it for one reason. <laughs> I want to do a conversion from DMC to MPI for this project. And I think I can easily do it, maybe not easily, because I have the NPI color card. So I went through my stash. I ordered this from 123 Stitch and I kitted it up with a bunch of floss that I didn't have. This is all DMC. So this is all the DMC for it that I didn't have in my stash. And then I had a bunch of it in my stash. So this is the full DMC 
for it. Um, but I'm going to take these. I haven't sat down and, and tried to do it yet. I'm going to see if I can. Um, I'm going to take these colors and I'm going to match them with the DM, with the uh, NPI color card and then order the MPIs slowly, you know, over time. And um, the DMC is, be it's beautiful. I love it, but I'd love to do that. I, I want the challenge of converting a large project into MPI and I love stitching with MPI. As far as what I'm gonna do it on, I don't know. I don't know what this calls for. It just says 40 count linen. I'm not sure. The model is very, is light. So I do have some options in my stash. I will use something that I have already. I'm not going to order anything for this. So I'm going to need a Oh, I'm going to need a fat half for sure. Yeah. It's it's just beautiful. And it's all border. Am I crazy? But these it's almost like not a border cuz they're all different. All these fl these flowers are when you see them stitched, oh my goodness. Carol Saltbox Stitcher. When I saw hers, I was like, oh, I must have this. And I'm not so much into Adam and Eve samplers. This is, this is probably going to be my own one and only. Got to have one, right? And as far as the, the verse... It's a religious verse. I know that Emily C from Eclectic Possessions is going to rechart it. So I might put her, and she always, if you ever want to look and see what she has, if you go to her Instagram, she has a, she has links. And she generously shares her, her charts for free. And she very often recharts uh, verses. And um, I think she's going to rechart this one. And I will, I might take her up on it. I'm pretty sure it's all over one. I don't mind over one. Especially with MPI, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, yeah. If it is a problem, I'll get some swasserfine. Or I'll just do a tent stitch. So. Emily will probably, if she recharts it, she probably will do it over two. We'll see. I don't know. I don't mind the look of the verse. I mean, it's not overly religious. It's not that bad. I may just keep it. We'll just see. I don't know. I'll see when I start looking at the chart. But this is not for this year. <laughs> for sure. It's going to take me time to sit down and do my conversion and order the floss and put this scan it into my computer and put it into Mark RxP. It's going to take me the year basically to do that. But I'm thinking maybe birthday start next year. Maybe I will have finished one of my other projects. So um, I do have some projects that are close to being finished. I have my other modern folk embroidery um, 2022 sal that I almost am finished with and I have um, and I have and got that and got is getting finished this summer when I'm outside by the pool that's when I like to stitch and got and she's gonna be she's almost done um, I want to get at least one more finish so I can send out my um, finishes to Paige the Framer to get them framed. And if you haven't seen my previous finishes from 2023, I'm going to show them to you now real quick. This is Mary Morgans. If you're new to my channel, she needs framing. She's so pretty. I love her. She'll probably go in my dining room too. I don't know where though. I think she'd look good in there. 
And then this one. Away we ride. Needs framing. But I want to send out three to get framed. Okay, so uh, that is it. I actually, this went a little longer than I thought it was gonna go. Um, but I wanted to, I brought out my drawer full of 40 count fabric. And I thought I would show it off. Here it is. In this drawer. Fairly well organized. I have them neatly put in there. So I'm going to show you a few pieces. Um, I think I have the lighting right so you can see. And I'm just going to grab in here and I'm going to show probably half of it. Um, in this episode, and then I'll show my other half in the next episode. So, without further ado, let's go through my fabric stash, shall we? All right, this is a fat half of 40 count Bramble Newcastle linen. This is a possibility for Jane Atkinson. It is an off-white with, it's got a little bit of a green tinge to it. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. I did start a project on here that got abandoned. This is Modern Folk Embroidery, um, Il Faziato Ricamato, something like that. And it's pretty, it's just, I, I... I lost interest. It happens. You know. But this is Bramble. 40 count. This is all this is everything in there is 40 count. It's my go-to linen. I love 36 count too. <clears throat> I just my big projects fit on 40 count. <laughs> A lot better, so I've been collecting it. All right, here is a beautiful piece of Picture This Plus Legacy, a half a yard. It's really gorgeous. This would be, anything would go, Jane Atkinson would look great on anything, but she might look good on this too. That's a pretty good representation. This is, again, a beautiful tan with some greenish modeling. Yeah, that looks good. So this is 40 Count Legacy by Picture This Plus. I really like Picture This Plus. It's easy to get, fairly easy to get, um, and it's great. It's a, and it, it's a nice tight weave, which is pretty cool. Okay, this is 40 Count Wren by Picture This Plus. This is more of a gold. There's no green in this one. It's a fat half. Plus, the more you use, the more you stitch with these fabrics, the softer they get. Even though picture this plus tends to be a little stiff from the dyeing, it get it softens up and it loosen the holes loosen up, you know. And if you kind of stretch it out a little bit, you know, do a little prep beforehand. Um, it 
it helps. This, this is a piece of, I think it's 38 count Russian tea cake by Leg Legacy. I think that's, it's not showing up great because it's a light color, but that's Russian tea cake. It's just got a bare hint of Like, I want to say, a very light gold, super light. And that's what I'm, I'm doing a holiday piece on that one. Um, what's this? Oh, this piece. I, I may over dye this. I don't like this color. I was going to stitch um, Peacock on it, and then I'm like, mm, I don't know, it's a hand dye. I just couldn't do it, even though I don't like the color. Uh, this is Seraphim hand dyed fabrics, and she has beautiful fabric. It's just, this, this is not my color. This is Caramel 40 Count Fat Half, and it's, okay, so on camera... Definitely looks more tan. It's not. It's peach. And there is, I don't, I haven't found anything that I want on this. Okay, that looks more peach. I'm not, maybe a, maybe a Halloween. I don't know. I might over dye it. I have some, I have some fabric dye, and maybe I'll do a little experiment and over dye this. We'll see. Just rough it up a little, because um, yeah, it's peachy. I don't know if it's supposed to be peachy, but to my eye, it looks very peachy. I mean, if you look at, see the difference? Not really my taste. Like if I was in person and getting this fabric, I would not have picked it. Okay, here is a piece of, here is the piece that I cut off of um, my precious schooner by LFA Linens. See the gold in that? It's so This is the bottom piece from Ann Cop or Mary Ann Cop. So, all right, I'll show you a couple more. Let's see what else I have in here. Ooh, this is a pretty one. I grabbed this um, Colorado cross stitcher, had a piece of this, and I'm like, I'm wanting to try that. And I may restart a project on this. This is um, this is needle and flax, dirty teacup. This is a really pretty piece too. So I have that hands across the sea piece. I can't think of the name of it right now. And I have it on 46 count, and I don't like 46 count. It's beautiful tabby cat linen. I may give it another shot, but if I can't find myself enjoying stitching that on that, I think I'm gonna use this. This is a fat, uh, a fat quarter, and it's gorgeous, I must say. So I have one more piece of linen and flax in here that I want to show you. I think I have 
two more pieces of linen and flax. But I'll show you this one that's real pretty. I had gotten this for a specific project that I may or may not start, but it's beautiful. This is Linen and Flax Eastwick. It's, it's really pretty. It's, it has a lot of interest. So I'm going to open her up and you'll see. It's got a lot going on. I love it. It's got brown and a cooler tone brown and it's beautiful see the cool tones in there like a gray really it's not brown it's like a brown and then with a gray over dye I think it must be a double dye I'm thinking I don't know how she dyed this but I don't know how to dye fabric. I would like to learn. I want to dye fabric like this though. <laughs> I could learn, maybe. I've been toying with the idea of starting a dyeing business. Let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that. Or if you would buy anything from me, it would be very small. It would be only advertised here. Because I, I would never be able to make an off if people liked it. Oh my goodness. So anyway. All right, let's stop there. I have a few more, but I'll show you next time. All right. So I hope you all enjoyed this episode. I will be back in a little while when I have more to show. Um, I'm not on a regular schedule, so maybe monthly, we'll see. Maybe back in, oh my God, is it April already? How is that possible? I'll probably be back in May sometime. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful start to your spring. Stitch something beautiful and cheers. <laughs>